we continue to march down the road to the Final Four. CBS Sports presents Pennzoil at the Half, sponsored by Pennzoil, specially formulated for today's stop and go driving. Stop, go, Pennzoil. Welcome once again to Pennzoil at the Half, everyone. Greg Gumbel along with Clark Kellogg and Dean Smith. Let's bring you up to date on the action taking place, first of all, in Sacramento. Tennessee with the lead at halftime on Illinois State 41 to 38 and uh, Tennessee Volunteers 17 and 0 this year when they lead at halftime they're in the good position although this game tightened up as they approached halftime coach. It sure did and both teams depend on getting to the foul line and they did yet both teams are fundamentally sound and did a good job in their pressure defense. The second 20 minutes is going to be determined, I think, by who can force their will on the opposition. Again, a strong backcourt for Tennessee could be a key factor in that last 20 minutes. All right, guys. Meanwhile, the first round game in Boise, Idaho, Utah with the lead on San Francisco 43 to 30. You're saying there's no doubt whatsoever where this game is being decided. Get it done in the paint, Greg. That's where it's happening for Utah, taking advantage of their side, doing a good job throwing the ball down inside. And Utah showing patience, and they're hard to come from behind, just like it's hard to come back against Prince. Princeton. All right, Coach, uh, two games taking place right now, one of them in Washington, D.C. at the MCI Center, Indiana, with a 53-39 lead on Oklahoma, 17-20 to play, second half. Let's join Sean McDonough and Bill Raptors. Indiana now leads Oklahoma 55-39 after a layup by Luke Jimenez. Indiana in white, the number seven seed in the East, taking on the 10 seed Oklahoma in first round action. Ryan Humphrey for the Sooners from the free throw line. And the freshman from Tulsa has 12. Uh, Calvin Sampson expressed his dissatisfaction and not playing as hard, getting beaten for the loose balls by Indiana. Rutgers had a relatively quiet night, but they haven't needed a big night from him. Pretty up Patterson. He's been all over, guys. You mentioned deep. Got the rebound that time. A little dish. The same record had a quiet night, but he still had nine points. It hasn't been as noticeable with some of the brilliant performances we've seen from Guyton and Patterson. The Hoosiers looking like a much different team than the Indiana team we saw near the end of the regular season. Well, the game we saw with Purdue in the tournament, we both felt was as good as we've seen them all year. Purdue had a great game on that Saturday Big Ten tournament. Patterson had a shot blocked by Humphrey. And now Brewer racing to catch up with the bouncing ball. Brewer missed the three. Boy, the Sooners look exhausted. They only had two players inside half court. The other three were lingering out by the midcourt line. It's almost when you're playing, you say, I know he's going to shoot, but I'm not going to come down. And he's shooting quickly, and here's the giveaway by. Luke Grecker, his first, I believe. Yes. And it leads us to a timeout. It's been a highlight reel for Indiana. The latest highlight, that pass, uh -huh. Guyton to Patterson. Crowd fan in the Indiana cheering section, Rhonda Guyton, mother of A.J., who has scored 19 points, leading the Hoosiers to... The 16-point lead on Oklahoma, 7 of 10 from the floor is A.J. Indiana as a team still shooting 61%. Oklahoma is at 50% field goal percentage, which ordinarily is very good, but not good enough tonight when you can't stop the opponent. Well, Indiana is getting good shots besides shooting very well. Well, they get pounded inside, get some inside-out basketball. Robert Allison fouled on a reach-in from behind by Record. And that's the second foul on Luke Recker. Foul call on the Hoosiers, number four, Luke Recker. 15-21 remaining. Temple, Same earlier second. today, suffered its worst loss in its history in the NCAA tournament, losing to its former Atlantic 10 mate, West Virginia. South Carolina is a highly seeded team. Upset in the first round for the second straight year. Last year is a two seed. South Carolina lost to Coppin State. This year is a three seed. They lost earlier today here in Washington, D.C. to the Richmond Spiders. And it was not a fluke. Nahara stopped as he tried to put a shot back up. Okay, all over. Jimenez got a stroke. A nice give up by Guyton, too. Assist. Luke Jimenez 
Sophomore from Redwood Falls, Minnesota, has five points. He is an invited walk-on to the Indiana program. They knew about him, but didn't have a scholarship for him. And invited him to walk onto the team, and he did. And here's a chance for a three-point play for Renzi Stone. They got to take it out of a little. Show what they're made of. And Renzi with a little power move, the will basket at the end of this play. But just to give up nice and easy, Jimenez gets the puppy set, knocks it down. They are not only getting good shots, but even the ones that are... Well, the MCI Center has seen a couple of big upsets today. Indiana hoping to become the first favored team to prevail in Washington, D.C. They lead it 60 to 43, just under 15 minutes to play in the second half. Meanwhile, at the Hartford Civic Center, the running Rebels victimized by a big Princeton run near the end of the first half, and Princeton leads it 50 to 38 as they approach 11 minutes to play in regulation. We want to remind you, second half of our doubleheader tonight. Many of you will see number two seed Connecticut, champions of the Big East, taking on Fairleigh Dickinson. Others will see Eastern Michigan clash with Michigan State in Hartford. Top seed Arizona takes on Nichols State. Number 11, Nebraska plays number six, Arkansas out west in Boise. All of that coming up on tonight's doubleheader here on CBS. Speaking of Boise, we'll take you back for the second half as the road to the Final Four continues. Pennzoil at the half has been sponsored by Pennzoil. Specially formulated. And the game summary. Can't take a look. It's the shooting of both scores. Uh, both ball clubs shooting the ball well. Three-point line. It has been terrific. Comeback. Keith and Tyrone Nesby have been hot for UNLV. They've scored the second half. Finally, they've stopped Princeton. They're back in this ballgame. And I'll tell you, this UNLV team, they've been down by as many as 15, but refuse to go away. They do refuse to go away. They've hung around again. If you're Princeton, you've got to wonder, hey, we delivered a knockout blow, we thought. But the Rebels are still here. Inside, Simmons. Howard dribble. Leans in. Rebound, Stewart. Stripped away. He hits the floor. Got it back. And jump ball is the call. And the UNLV fans wanted a foul on that play. And the UNLV team has some fight in them, Gus. They're going after a loose ball. They're back in this ball game. Possession arrow to Princeton. Take a look at the loose ball. Stewart has been aggressive. The active hands down low as the ball goes out. Stewart has a hold of it. Can't get rid of it. Forced on the jump ball. 56 to 49. Henderson double team. And Luell has passed up the shot. Here's Goodrich. Luell is quiet in the second half. Rebels have stayed man to man the whole second half. They have to defend the perimeter. That Seven opens, shoot. opens up the lane. Look how open it is. Here's the back door. Luell has pivots. Oh. Boy, fundamental basketball. Good footwork, good bounce. Open the lane up, catch it, and make a good move down low. Dixel blowing down the line. Here's Nesby. Six twenty-one to go in the second half. Fifty-eight to forty-nine. Princeton. They've led by as many as fifteen, but UNLV fighting back, and they trail it right now. But Princeton has regained the momentum. Yeah, two good defensive stops by the Tigers now on the offensive end. They keep the spacing, keep the lane open. There'll be some backdoor cuts. If not, there'll be shots from the outside. UNLV has to hang in there for a full 35 seconds on the defensive end. Here's Goodrich. Henderson. UNLV. Leaving Luellis wide open, and the ball just bouncing Princeton's way. Ball knocked out of bounds. We stay right here. And here in the east, Hartford, Connecticut, North Carolina, beating Navy today. They advance to the second round and will play UNC Charlotte, who beat Illinois Chicago. It's the first ever meeting between UNC Charlotte and the University of North Carolina. So, John, UNLV got down early. They stayed in the zone too long, but they're trying to answer right now. Close to the one and one. One 20 second timeout for each team. Two full timeouts for Princeton and the possession arrow favors the running Rebels. And our score, Princeton leading at 58 to 49. Five minutes, 43 seconds to go. Back door, Henderson, and he scores on the inbound play. Yeah, pretty play. Princeton tried to deliver a knockout ball about 10 minutes ago. It didn't work. 
UNLV hung in behind the shooting of Nesby and Keith, and all of a sudden they're back in, but two backdoor cuts, two layups by Princeton against Stretch and Zalee. And Simmons has the layup, and it's a nine-point game once again. Gus, this Tiger team doesn't lose its cool, though, does it? Not at all. Very poised, very calm. Almost a turnover there. And Earl dribbles out of traffic. Look at that. Curly Neal style. <laughs> Here's Goodrich. Most clubs in the country do not have this kind of spacing on the offensive end, and that's what you get. When you do those things, the defense just wears down, and that's three layups in a row when this game got to seven points. And a steal, Henderson, and he is fouled by Dickel. Rebels in a man-to-man -man defense on the underneath out of bounds. They had a little pick the picker and the easy layup. On the offensive end, they keep the spacing. They point, they're such great shooters. Ran off the top, Nesby didn't switch quick enough, didn't see the ball. Turned with his back to the ball and missed it. Ball Easy too. I tell you what, when you watch Princeton play, it reminds you of going out and playing a pickup game, and some old guys come onto the court, and they're playing <laughs> exactly a bunch right. of young athletic guys as he misses the free throw, and all the old guys do is pick and roll you to death. And they just frustrate you. They just pass, they cut, they don't waste time dribbling and trying to put a show on in front of you. They make you chase him defensively. What they've done tonight, they've just worn this UNLV team down. Once again, backdoor cut. Perfect pass from Steve Goodman. 64 to 51, 420 to go in the second half. Nesby, quick shot, rebounded by Stewart. Here's Dickel, kicked it out. Stewart leaned in. And Goodrich with the rebound. Okay, Gus, first half. They knock in seven straight three-pointers. Second half, once it got to seven points, They've made four straight layups once they got to seven points. They have 18 on backdoor cut. So they can kill you from downtown, and they can get easy shots as well. Another backdoor cut. Goodrich with the nice catch. Shot clock at 10, just where they want it. Again, four straight layups they've had. Here's Earl for three. And Simmons with the rebound. 64-51. Do the Rebels have enough energy? They climbed the mountain, got back in this ball game, and Princeton shook them off. Now we'll see if the Rebels can make another run. Look at the spacing on the floor. Everybody's away from the basket. The lane's wide open and simple. High post pass, bounce pass down low, firm enough so it bounces easily into his teammate. Well, it's just like this. Here's Keith. Simmons for three. And Luellis with the rebound and a foul. Nesby reached in. Don't forget, upcoming games, Fairleigh Dickinson in Connecticut, Eastern Michigan and Michigan State, Nickel State in Arizona, and Nebraska against Arkansas out west. Wildcats start their uh, defending the crown tonight. So Gabe Luellis, great first half. He had 11 points, 15 now. <laughs> 318 to go in the second half, and Princeton a comfortable 65 to 51 lead over UNLV. And in the first half, UNLV came in, packed it in in the zone. Princeton hit. Seven straight three-pointers after starting one for seven from the three-point line. Led by as many as 15. Yeah, if you were to tell the Rebel coaching staff that you're going to shoot about 50% from the field, also 50 from three-point line, they'd probably take that, but not tonight. Princeton, 59% from the field and 45% from beyond the stripe, but nine of 20. They have 20 attempts of three. There's Keith slapping to the basket. Three minutes to go. 66-53. And time starting to work against this running Rebel squad who's won six straight games coming into the NCAA tournament. And Brian Earl, the junior from Medford Lakes, New Jersey. His brother, older brother Dan, 
with the point guard for Penn State. Earl got a start in the first half when they were down, Gus, and they were struggling. He's the one that knocked in the big one to get him going. Nobody blocked out, and Princeton picked up the loose ball. There they go again. They ran 30 seconds off the clock. You play defense, they get another rebound, and you're back at it again. Boy, this just wears you out mentally if you're on the defensive end. Anderson to the basket, up and the foul. When you control the defense like this Princeton team does by their movement and their offense, once you want to make an explosion move like Henderson can, he's the best off the dribble. Once he goes hard, the defense is already worn down and tired. So he makes a, finally makes a hard move when the shot clock is still has plenty of time on it. By surprise, and he lays it in. So the co-captain, along with Steve Goodrich, adds the free throw. 2.06 to go. And the Tigers lead it 69 to 53. Nesby. Simmons. And Steve Goodrich with the board. One shot it out now, Princeton. You just control the clock, do what you've done all year long. And the Princeton faithful are on their feet. And most of this arena is cheering this team. What a good ball game. For good reason, the Princeton Tigers a minute and 26 seconds away from heading into the second round. Here's Earl. And Keith with the rebound. A solid, solid performance. Gus and anybody who's in this building or has watched this game understands now that this is a very, very good ball club. 107 to go. Simmons got the ball to drop in a timeout call. Looks like a 20, 69 to 55. Now let's check out our CBS Sports Live statistic of the game. Points off turnovers. Look at that. Princeton, 18 points off turnovers. UNLV, zero. And you would expect the Rebels to have some of those. They didn't get many turnovers. Princeton doesn't turn it over much, and they didn't get out and run. And look at the Yazzie <laughs> The library is closed. <laughs> Having some fun. <laughs> There's Coach Carmody's wife, Barbara. A lot of joy on that Princeton side. The good riches. Entering the lineup for 69-55, 1-0-5 and counting. Henderson up the sideline. Entering the Princeton lineup, number 51, Sean Gregory, and number 44, Darren Hyde. Again, they're a team that plays keep away. Nobody's wasting too much time dribbling. When they're trapped, they pass to the open man. When he's trapped, he gives it up to the other open man. Anderson inside, rebounded by Anderson. He's just checked in the game. Nesby again for three. Barely grazed the rim. Just what do you think? Eastern Michigan, Michigan State, the coaching staffs, and one of those will get Princeton. And I'd like to see their notebook about scouting this game. Zone them, man them. How do you want to play? I tell you, these guys from the Ivy League can really go. <laughs> 17 seconds remaining. They're on their feet for the Tigers. Seated number five. And they head into the second round. The Princeton Tigers have knocked off UNLV. 67 27-1 and one on the season. So the final score from Hartford, Princeton advances. They beat UNLV 69-57. So three teams have already advanced. Carolina, USC Charlotte, and Princeton, the Chevrolet players of the game. Nesby and Brian Earl. Now let's go to New York and Greg Gumbel.
All right, Gus, for Princeton, a school record 20th consecutive victory. And the Tigers play the winner of the next game, Eastern Michigan and Michigan State. Now, from there, we'll take you to Washington, D.C. The MCI Center is the site of Oklahoma, Indiana, with under five minutes to play in the game. The Sooners have put on a bit of a charge. It's closed to 74-67. Let's join Sean McDonough and Bill Raftery in Washington, D.C. Leads by five with 2.17 remaining. Both teams in the bonus situation. And Oklahoma has just one timeout left. The arrow points in favor of Indiana. It rests in Dayton's hands as to the direction. They're struggling down the stretch. The guards have to take over. Oklahoma, essentially a seven-man team. They played eight players, but Alex Balding played just one minute in the first half. These seven have battled back from 19 down to within five. We approach two minutes left. Right into Jimenez. Richard Mandeville back on the court. Number 21 for Indiana. Patterson and Wrecker, the rest of the five. Patterson in the lane along time. Yeah. Oh, with a chance for three. Big basket. They have first tried to isolate Guyton on the same side with Patterson. He has stepped up magnificently. Wants the ball. Doing very constructive things. Here's the turn to square up and now a little step through. Take the hook, the semi jump hook, which is a rattler. Very impressive all evening long. When he needed something, he has not minded at all taking the shot. Patterson missed the free throw. Humphrey the rebound. The foul on Ryan Humphrey with his third. 147 remaining. Indiana by seven. Allison back to Brewer. Off to Wiley for an easy two. And that is a nice quick hitter, too. A little flare and then the penetration. Jimenez would be the worst free throw shooter on the court for Indiana, and he's not a bad free throw shooter at 69%. I a good free throw team, 73% collectively. Patterson surrounded. Patterson, nice move, fouled again. This time by Evan Wiley, his fourth. And you mentioned Jim, it is, uh, what a nice little feed to the post and good presentation by now Patterson. Now, 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 and he came with a double, he was smart enough to avoid it. The ninth team foul against Oklahoma, so one more and Indiana will shoot two and every Andre Oklahoma Patterson foul the rest of the way. The shooting two. Patterson. With his first made free throw. He's now one out of three from the strike. 23 points for the senior. And, and you can see by his ability how it can be disappointing when he can't do this more often mm -hmm. at Indiana. And Indiana fans, many of them believe he has the ability to do it night after night, mm -hmm. and sometimes it seems to be just a matter of intensity or focus for That's Andre a, Patterson. There's a niceness about him. As Brewer once again gets to the rim, the and giveaway. He's fouled by Wrecker. That's three on Luke Wrecker. Well, this is a seven-point game, and it rates as a major record. blowout here in Washington, D.C., considering <laughs> what we have here this afternoon. Two one-point games. Washington over Xavier, and Richmond beat South Carolina by a point. The final game of the night upcoming, Connecticut Good against Fairleigh Dickinson. That should be a very entertaining game. FDU likes to go up and down, and Connecticut has had success over the years with that style, too. And they both like to press, so it's a exacerbate the situation a little bit more. Nahara grimaced as Brewer missed the first free throw. He has 16 points, but 12 of those were in the first half. That's right. Again, if he makes it and get that press set up, it was a problem earlier for Indiana. And they go with Lewis now for that reason, Indiana. Balding comes in and Brewer goes out. Balding might be the designated fouler here. One oh one remaining. <laughs> Did you see and that? And apparently Spalding was the designated fouler for Dinner Oklahoma as he tackled Jimenez into the scorer's table. Uh, Mike Reardon used to do that for the old Knicks. Red Holzer used to put him in. He would give one right away. <laughs> <laughs> Not a bad move, though. That was the instruction that Spalding received. He carried out the instructions to a D. He took Jimenez <laughs> right into the press table at center court. And Jimenez, a 69% free throw shooter. Was the man to foul, worst free throw shooter on the floor. 
And then he missed the first. Number 21, Richard. So it is still Indiana by six with 101 remaining. Ryan Humphrey comes back in. Spalding, <laughs> after his quick foul, goes back to the bench along with Stone. So it's Humphrey, Brewer, Johnson, Wiley, and Allison for the Sooners. Two misses by Jimenez. One minute left. One, One minute, minute left. Oklahoma within six. At one point, the Sooners trailed by 19. Brewer, Johnson, open for a three. Oh, does that get him right back in? Quick timeout. Oh, what the three can do to change your fortune. Penetration, kick it back out. Nice acknowledgement by Johnson. And a last timeout burned by Oklahoma. Sean McDonough with Bill Raftery and Andrea Joyce back at the MCI Center in Washington, D.C. Well, it was a comfortable 19-point lead for Indiana. It is now a three-point edge for the Hoosiers, and they're hanging on with 49 and a half to go. And your man is bad. This is what I do with you if you played for me. Put you in the foul somebody. <laughs> <laughs> My problem would be I couldn't catch up to the guy who needed the foul. Now, let's see. Jimenez would still be the man to follow, going strictly by the percentages. They put Michael Lewis and the shooter back in, and that's a 10-second foul to the backcourt. They were trying to avoid the foul and forgot about concentrating, getting over the timeline. So Spalding, in effect, had an impact twice now, once with the giveaway. Oklahoma has no timeouts remaining. Now a three-pointer could tie. And you'd have to think they'd try to get it to Brewer or Johnson if they're eyeing a three. Allison also a good three-point shooter at 35%. And so with this amount of time to go, I think they should just go ahead and try and get on the board. Yep. Same kind of pressure defense, then decide to give one if they have to. Now some confusion among the officials. They're huddling by the official scorers area. And the game clock will be adjusted to show 39 points. The problem with the seconds. game clock is added less than a second, 39.5. And that's a good change because it was at 49.5 when Indiana inbound. If 10 seconds come off and you get the count, it should be 39.5. Allison plays it in over record. Now Michael Johnson, Wiley, Humphrey, and Brewer. The rest of the five for OU. A double pick. Brewer for the basket, lays it in, and a chance for a three-point play. He was fouled by Rucker. Wow. Unbelievable. The ability to bounce. I thought that was a play on at the end, though, Sean. Just scored a goal and let him inbound. Rucker underneath the 10. Brewer earlier dribble, drive, dish for the three. This time, all on his own. A little slide by. Gets a piece, and <laughs> Kelvin, incredible comeback. And the disbelief etched on Bob Knight's face. Brewer, Brewer needs the free throw to tie it. He has 19 points. He's an 80% free throw shooter. He gets the bounce from 19 down to a tie for Kelvin Sampson in Oklahoma with 29.7 seconds left. That's Karen Sampson in the black and white check jacket, Kelvin Sampson's wife. Indiana can hold for the last shot. Jimenez to Guyton. Seven unanswered points by Oklahoma to pull even. They ought to go to Patterson when they can. Time out. Time called by Indiana with 11.7 left. What a day, Sean McDonough. <laughs> oh, two one-point games here in Washington, D.C., and this one goes down to the buzzer. Fifteen-point lead. It's now a tie game. Both teams in the double bonus. Oklahoma without a timeout. The arrow favors IU. The Hoosiers led 65-46 with 12.58 left, but they've been outscored 34-15 since. Guyton or Patterson have to get a touch, I think. Michael Lewis with the ball. Patterson has the touch, guarded by Wiley. Patterson blocked by Humphreys. 
Allison throws it the length of the court, and we're heading for overtime. Unbelievable reaction. They knew where it was going. Pay attention to detail. That was the fourth block of the game by Humphrey. He came over to help on the double and swatted Patterson's shot. And Patterson committed totally to the jumper. And right here you can see the read and the nice zone up. Allison helping, so they had great confidence as to what they were going to do. It all depended where the post up came. And Kelvin Sampson with a great job preparing for that particular play. And his rookie, magnificent, with the rejection. We're heading for overtime at the end of regulation. Oklahoma and Indiana tied at 80. First overtime game of the season for Indiana. Oklahoma played one and lost. And right in there to help out on Wiley. He's not even paying attention to Humphrey. Brewer with Jimenez defending. Johnson thought about a three. Some of the Oklahoma shooters look tentative here in overtime. Wiley stripped twice. He tried for a third time. Traveling the call. Kelvin Sampson wanted a foul. I thought that. I think it was pretty good play. A lot of slaps. He felt it was on the hand. Everybody digging and scratching. Wiley could. It's almost like being in New York on the subway, huh? Everybody around you. Scratching and clawing. Nearly midway through overtime. They are midway through the extra session now. Oklahoma still has not scored. And Indiana spreads the floor and a half court against pressure defense. Record. And what a post up by Patterson. Big time dish and then the sleight of hand by the rookie Luke. Does this undermanned Oklahoma team have another comeback? In its arsenal, a blocking foul called against Patterson. So Brewer will shoot two, and that's the third personal on Patterson. Well, coaches are delighted when you're unselfish, but what a terrific look, both by Patterson and cool hand Luke. Corey Brewer at the line. Shooting Corey two. Brewer. At the line with 20 points. Number 33, Here comes Stone, Stone back in for Wiley. Two free throws by Corey Brewer. First point for Oklahoma in overtime with two minutes left in overtime. It's Indiana by four. And Jimenez has that trouble. One three, one trap. All alone, Gladness again. Uh, they were strong early, and no one recovered baseline. A couple of easy baskets for Indiana against the scrambling Oklahoma defense. Brewer shut off by Jimenez. Nahara was deflected by record. Patterson, now Gladness. Indiana with the ball up six. Minute 33 left in overtime. Still 20 on the shot clock as Humphrey commits the foul, his fourth. And off the basketball, Nahara was given a foul on Gladness. I think they're going to have to do something with that particular play. This is the 1-3-1 one trap. They got a piece, and you can just see top side doesn't get down. And Bob Knight enjoying that particular play, and he wants him to get back and guard a little bit. But that's an interesting, they gave a foul without the basketball being involved on record at half court in regulation. They just tried to give one to Gladness who would have not involved in the play at all. I think it's something they're going to have to address. Record for the season, 79%, but today just four out of seven. Indiana's missed just one shot from the floor in overtime. And the lead is seven with a minute 20 left. 18 points for the freshman Luke record. Screen down. Brewer. Again defended by Jimenez. Allison using a stone screen. Wiley. 
took a lot of time off the clock there. That possession was 20 seconds long, but Oklahoma got the bucket it needed to get within five. And Oklahoma uses its only timeout in overtime. 101 remaining in overtime. Indiana leads by five. This is not about fashion. Indiana leads by five. Upcoming games, Eastern Michigan and Michigan State just underway at Hartford. Here in Washington, D.C., Fairleigh Dickinson will take on Connecticut. Defending national champ Arizona begins its defense against Nichols State in just a few minutes. Eastern Michigan with the early lead over the Spartans. And Alex Antonio Smith laying it in, and the Spartans go up by a point. But this game... Oklahoma letting a lot of time yeah, come off the clock here. So they did one, Sean. Wrecker. Move the ball if you're Indiana. you got to give one. They finally oh. get there. But why would oh. you do that after 24 seconds had come off the clock and you fouled their best free throw shooter, Lewis, at 85%? The action. And sometimes mentally, because of the physical tiredness, you just don't react the way you should. Mm -hmm. Lewis has not attempted a free throw in this game. 80 for 94 for the year. Balding goes out, Corey Brewer back in. The first point of the game for Michael Lewis, the sophomore. And he made just one out of two. And it was in two three-point field goals here. Quick 30 pass. seconds left in overtime. Johnson steps back for a three that stays in. Went down, Johnson. came out, and went back in. He didn't really get a good bump. Not good defense by Indiana. Got to give it right away. Step up. Humphrey has fouled out. If that's on Ryan, he was the only player in the neighborhood. So Ryan Humphrey fouls out for Oklahoma with 24 seconds left in overtime. Oh goodness! Both teams reaching back. Last amount of gas in the tank. Nahara now will substitute. The ability to dribble the ball quickly in favor of Oklahoma now is Johnson can sprint speed dribble also brewer as a disqualifying foul is replaced by number 21 Eduardo Nankara Wrecker will go to the line Indiana has struggled from the line 17 out of 27 that's 63 percent their 73 percent team for the season for Indiana number 30 William Gladden is returned Wrecker's just five out of eight from the line. Ordinarily 79%. Spalding in Luke the 12-round three-point addition. He can shoot two. them from 31 for the year. A miss. And he made a second. It's a four-point lead and a timeout called by Indiana. 24.2 left in overtime. Indiana takes a full we'll return to the out. MCI Center in Washington, D.C. in a moment. With seven seconds left. A three by Harris. Utah the rebound as the game comes to an end. Rick Majerus and the Utes move on. Philip Matthews and San Francisco finish their season 19 and 11. Our Chevrolet players of the game, Jamal Cobbs with 16 points. He had three three-point, make that four three-point field goals for his 16 points. Michael Doliak for Utah with 27 points, big at the free throw line. Utah moves on to meet the Arkansas-Nebraska winner, which is our second game here. Now let's go to Greg. All right, Jim Durham, thank you very much. So the action takes a break for a while in Boise. Meanwhile, in Arco Arena in Sacramento, Illinois State and Tennessee are tied at the end of regulation. Overtime looms. Let's go out and join Ian Eagle and Jim Spinarco. 
but five minutes on the clock. Overtime in Sacramento, 72-72. Tennessee and Illinois State. Rico Hill had a chance to win it. With time running out, and his 12-foot jump shot went in and out. They had the look they wanted, and he has stroked the basketball from that range this year, has improved his outside shot. In Tennessee, I thought they elected to go with the quick shot down the other end of the court. The last time Illinois State has won an NCAA tournament game, you have to go back to 1985. For Tennessee, 1983. So both of these schools hungry to move on to the second round. Illinois State was here last year. They lost to Iowa State. Brooklyn Sound, CBS Monday. Oklahoma's ball with 24.2 seconds left in overtime, and the Sooners down by four. Both teams well into the double bonus now. Oklahoma again without any timeouts. The arrow is in their favor. This is not the only overtime game Going on at the moment in the NCAA tournament out in Sacramento, Tennessee, and Illinois State are 72 apiece in OT. Uh, now you got to go for two real fast and give the foul. Brewer runs right over Wrecker, and it's an offensive foul on Corey Brewer, and he has fouled out. Well, that sort of makes up for that one earlier. I didn't think Wrecker fouled underneath the rim on that three-point play late. But you know they're coming, so you get the puppy set and offer it up. Sometimes it hurts more than others. Corey Brewer fouls out of what could be his last game, barring an amazing turn of events Brewer. now. 22 yeah, points and one rebound for the senior in West Memphis, Arkansas. And not a whole lot of decisions over there. Well. It's the big guy back in. They got to be ready now to give the foul immediately. Yeah, I don't think you have a choice as to who to foul. Even if Oklahoma could force another overtime, we wonder how they could compete in the second OT without Humphrey and without Brewer. Alex Brown would have to be a miracle oh, man. <laughs> Busier than most Spalding. during the course of this year. Alex Spalding has committed three fouls. I would guess that, that those three fouls have been in less than three minutes of playing time. He got his name in the book quickly. Yes, he did. And Lewis, Good you shot. mentioned the Michael ability Lewis. to convert. Missed one of two the last trip, 85%. Hmm. Even their best free throw shooter. Missing. A uncharacteristically tough time at the line tonight. Two out of five. It's a five-point lead for Indiana. 18.6 left. Johnson was guarded by Patterson, and Wrecker swats the shot by Spaulding. So you need a five. That would have been a good two. Go get the two. Foul again. Mm -hmm. Now I think you're almost committed to going for the three. Wiley with the screen. Now they go all the way. So they Johnson shoot. lost it on the way up. Nahara couldn't control, and Indiana is going to survive and win a first-round game for the first time in four years. And that's the correct word, survive. And maybe survival of the finish, more bodies. Mm -hmm. uh, Kelvin not getting that great first half and the reality setting in with the family at this point. Tremendous comeback, under 13 minutes left, down by 19. Coach Sampson and the Sooners will be knocked out in the first round for the fourth straight year. There'll be five first round exits in a row for Oklahoma dating back to the Billy Tubbs era. Chevrolet players of the game are Corey Brewer of Oklahoma and Andre Patterson of Indiana. Wrecker makes the first free throw and sending you to the other overtime game in four seconds. Tennessee and Illinois State in the extra session. Oklahoma's season will end at 22 and 11. Indiana has its 20th victory of the year. Now 20 and 11. It was a major struggle, and Coach Knight will have much that he won't be pleased about about this one. 94-87. Indiana beats Oklahoma in overtime, and.
Indiana will meet the winner of the last game of the day here in Washington, D.C., Connecticut and Fairleigh Dickinson, coming up in about a half an hour. Let's return you now to New York and Greg Gumbel. Sean and Bill, an overtime game and two one-pointers. I don't know if the tickers can stand it anymore. Meanwhile, at the Arco Arena in Sacramento, Illinois State and Tennessee are in overtime. Under two and a half minutes to play in the OT. Tennessee by two. Let's take you there now and join Ian Eagle and Jim Spinarkle. There's a timeout taking place now, and we'll go back there to Sacramento for more first-round action right after this. Victor, he has come up with two of them in the last 90 seconds. Coming up on two minutes to play in OT. Volunteers with a two-point lead in a ball. They'll focus on Wharton when he gets in close and when they start their attack. He hit that three a moment ago. Shot clock is down to 12. Tony Harris. Penetrations are going to be difficult against the matchup. Down to five. Black could not get the pass. And Illinois State with a chance to tie or take the lead. Just like Victor down the other end, Gibbons answers with a good defensive stop inside on the interior. You gotta get something going towards the basket. They're point guards that can break people down. Cart Mills. The cutter is Hansel. Got two men in the air. Count it and the foul. That's exactly what they have to do, though. They have to get the ball into the paint area. Hansel, who had the cramps earlier, has shaken them off. Nice little set. Cartmill's really playing well from the point. Good work from the guards. This is what it's all about. Steve Hansel, 15 points. Starting for the injured Skip Schaefer. And a timeout has been called by Tennessee. Tied up, 77 apiece. An 8-9 game should be. Illinois State and Tennessee locked up at 77 apiece with Steve Hansel getting set for a free throw, trying to convert on a three-point play. He has not missed tonight. Five of five from the field, four of four from the free throw line. Illinois State with a one-point advantage. Now keep in mind, the outside, the guards have had some trouble shooting. Maybe a penetration and a two-pass two swing for a jump shot. Counting down to one minute to play in overtime. 78-77, Illinois State. Comes Smith over. Harris rather over the left side. They're not getting inside at all for the penetration. Eight to shoot. Lee on a kick out. Wharton the pump fake. Leaning jump shot. Doesn't drop. Black battling. Lee comes in and gets the bucket. Lee right around the glass. Excellent job of following up a shot. Tennessee up by one. 12 second difference. Shot clock the game clock. Watkins driving in for the deuce. Where was the help? Victor was a little late getting across. Back and forth we go. Illinois State with a one point lead. About a half a second difference. Game clock to the timer. Tennessee taking its time, trailing by one in OT. Harris, the drive, the dish. Black, right. good position for the layup. It sure was. He had a small guy in the rotation, not able to contest. A great penetration by Harris, really, when they needed a, a big opportunity to get down the middle of the floor. Watch Cartmill at the end. Here's the catch, and it's the little guy who rotates down against the big fella Black. No contest down deep. The shot clock has been turned off. Vegas Davis returns for Tennessee. It's 81-80. to 80. Illinois State with the ball. He can run the baseline. He doesn't need to. Good pressure. This is a good move from Tennessee. Make it a little difficult. Take time off the clock. Final seconds. Hansel. Five seconds. Hill with four. The drive underneath. Muller gets the bucket. 1.8 to play. Davis forced to put it up a three at the buzzer. Doesn't drop. And Illinois State 
will move on to the second round. Their first NCAA tournament win since 1985. What an effort from both of these schools. But Illinois State, the nine seed, has knocked off eight-seeded Tennessee. And the Redbirds are advancing on to round two. An elated group at one end of the floor, and believe me, it is a heartbreak. Not only losing a close game, but the situation of the NCAA tournament for some of these kids, their last opportunity. Just a fabulous, fabulous finish. Muller just found a terrific spot on the floor, and Kevin Stallings and company goes away with a just a terrific effort. What a game. 82 to 81. Illinois State survives. Just a tremendous effort from both schools. And Illinois State wins by one in overtime. Let's take a look at the bracket with Illinois State moving on to meet the winner of the Arizona Nickel State matchup. That'll be coming up. Three of the four teams are set. Our Chevrolet players of the game, Rico Hill, 22 points. And 23 points for Brandon Wharton. 82 to 81. We'll head back to New York and Greg Gumbel when we come back after this. Back in New York, Greg Gumbel along with Clark Kellogg and Dean Smith in the Hartford Civic Center, Michigan State and the uh, Eagles of Eastern Michigan. 7-11 to play in the first half. Eastern Michigan with a one-point lead at 26-25. We want to remind you what's to come here on CBS still this evening in the second half of our doubleheader tonight. Many of you will see number two seed Connecticut, champions of the Big East, take on Fairleigh Dickinson in the West. Nickel State takes on the top seed in the West. Arizona tip time is 10:34, and at 10:20 Eastern time, also in the West, Nebraska will take on number six, Arkansas. What a great game that took place in the MCI Center in Washington this evening between Oklahoma and Indiana. It went to overtime, and the Hoosiers survived the winner 94-87. to Coach, you were saying that the way Indiana won this game may be the best thing for the Hoosiers. I really believe that because I thought they played outstanding basketball in overtime, and then it kind of wakes you up. Hey, we've got to get better instead of thinking of the 20-point victory they'd be thinking tomorrow i mean on the next day it would be easy and as clark kellogg quietly observed it appeared <laughs> that the running rebels stopped doing in overtime what got them to the ot they sure did i thought they got a little too tentative in the overtime they came back from 19 down they did it by being aggressive making it a very physical game and then they got on their heels a little bit but you got to give iu credit they shot 59 percent for the game and that's what carried them through in the ot all right clark and you're all about giving credit too <laughs> in the west first round action at arco arena in sacramento in overtime Time, Illinois State over Tennessee, 82-81 in overtime. What a great game that was, too. In uh, Hartford, well, first of all, before we get to Hartford, let's talk about this last game because uh, the Redbirds played themselves a heck of a ball game, Dean. Yeah, they really did. Illinois State and Tennessee are coached the same way, the same fast break, the same defense. They're friends, and I thought it was just a great basketball game. Illinois State, the underdog won. All right. Came up with the last shot. I mean, this was a game that seemed like whoever had the ball last was going to come out on top, and that's exactly what happened. Okay. Sacramento and Boise games still to come. Those of you expecting those, we will bring them to you shortly. We'll take a timeout, and we will continue with more here on the road to the Final Four. Those of you awaiting the fourth game of the day in Washington, D.C., scheduled there, the University of Connecticut Huskies, the number two seed in the East, taking on Fairleigh Dickinson. That's coming up shortly. Look ahead to this game for us, Clark. Well, Fairleigh Dickinson has to shoot the ball well. That's the only chance they have. They're not very big. UConn will try to make them play fast, take advantage of their speed and size. All right, Clark, in the East, the first round action.